We are turning our attention to the League of Ireland. It is back. Stuart Byrne is with us. How are you, Stuart? Hey, Owen. How are you? How are you doing? Not too bad, thanks. So uh, a lot of debate around the format of how we're going to proceed with the season over uh, the next little while about how to get, get the game even back up and running. Obviously, Ireland was lagging behind. Uh, do you see that any of those issues rearing its head again or have things been sorted out and everybody is just happy to get back on the pitch tonight? I'd say everyone's just happy to get back on the pitch um, without a doubt, definitely without a doubt. Um, whether or not we've sort of ironed out all the issues, I'm not so sure. Um, we're obviously in, you know, going through sort of something that we've never gone through before. It's, it's, it's a global pandemic. Um, just such a fractured diversity um, within the football clubs here that it's very difficult to get a common goal or one or two kind of common ways forward. So I think they're the kind of issues that we will have to redress once the season is over. But I think the fact that we're, we're going into what is a, a shortened season, um, games are going to be coming thick and fast when you look at the schedule um, there's a game on nearly every day with the exception of Wednesday and Thursday. So I think that's going to be enough to kind of um, keep the focus on the pitch for the moment. But uh, I think there's a lot of work to be done off the pitch. Yeah, we might get that, get into that in just a moment. But as you say, the games being streamed, the games being available, the games being very frequent, that presents a great opportunity. Oh, well, it does. And it's probably a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for us, Owen, because um, I, w I would have been very much in favour of something like this um, a long time ago, I felt that there was the technology was always available. Um, unfortunately, there just didn't seem to be a will at a particular level to do it. But it's happened now by default, and I think it's a wonderful thing. It's a great opportunity for um, the game here to be showcased um, globally because it can be accessed globally. Um, and you know, when you look at um, some of the games that we've been looking at behind closed doors, I think what it, it's probably highlighted that. Um, you know, it's amazing what um, um, a brand can do for a game or what the, what the crowd noise can do for a game, what the atmosphere can do. So we're kind of very much on a level playing field now that people are going to be, people are, you know, have been looking at games in Germany, they've been looking at games in England and um, all across Europe. And it's just been the, 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 the football. And then we're now being sort of brought up to the same level. So it's an opportunity for people to kind of look at the games, see what the, what the, what the quality is really like, which I believe is there. Um, so hopefully um, we get to see some really, really good quality games. Sorry, go on, Adrian. Yeah, Stewie, how are you getting on? Good morning. The Hi, um, streaming thing, obviously, I know you're involved in the production of it, so you're going to tell us it's going to be amazing, and, and we get that. Look at that, some of the comments that have come from RTE and other sources over the last couple of weeks about the appetite or the numbers that are actually going to come and, and pay for the service. It seems to be... That there's some questioning of that, like whether whether there's a short window now to make a success of this. They won't tell us um, what numbers actually would represent success. Um, what's your sense of um, whether there is enough of an appetite from League of Ireland fans here and abroad to make this thing work? Well, I can only go on, Adrian, what I've sort of felt myself in. I would I'd say in the last couple of years and just in conversations I would would have had with people. Um, either winning football or actually outside of football in my job for example so in my you know um i work in an office for 400 just, just three 400 people um you know and everyone's a football fan and um, and everyone's a big fan of the um obviously the english premier league and, and so on and so forth but you've got you've got you know a lot of uh, guys in there uh, and gals who support uh, the game here and want to support the game here actually which is probably more 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 um more significant than anything they want to support the game here however the problem is um you know the age-old problem is that we we've we've often shot ourselves in the foot um when it comes to uh, the promotion of the game here um the off the field bickering never helps um and the grounds are some of the grounds aren't at, at, a, at a good enough standard the facilities for families, these are all you know. The list is there. We all know them. There's no point in sort of saying they don't exist. And um, they do. Um, but I do feel that um, there's a hunger there for people to kind of want to get involved. They want. They want to go down to their to their, their, their local league of Ireland club or whatever the case may be. You know, sometimes you know some counties don't have a have a, a, a league of Ireland team within their within their county. But there's always one close by. I think there's a, a hunger to get involved, but something needs to be, they need to be pulled in, Adrian. You know, there needs to be more promotion around that. We need to try mm. and identify what that market is, who these people are. Um, 
I made a comment there during the week about, um, uh, which is something I, I do every few years, but I'm gonna I'm gonna start start pressing the button on it now. Um, I I feel that um, I just I'm trying to make people aware now of their affiliation with the Premier League and the club they might support in the Premier League. And what you know, why is that? You know, I'm trying to kind of maybe question people as to why, or at least make an awareness to why is it you support an English Premier League? Why are we so obsessed with the English Premier League? And you know, there are probably some. There are, pro- I would say, in mo- most cases, there are very, very legitimate reasons as to why we are obsessed with the English Premier League. But I'd say, in, in there, there are a small percentage of people, and I would hope a, a, a bigger percentage of people, that maybe aren't too sure why they have an affiliation with a football club in England. And maybe, maybe they're the kind of people we convinced to come back here and say, well, look, you know, because we're, go- we're going, we're going, we're going through, we're having this pure reflective period at the moment. Um, mm. After what's happened through COVID, we're being asked to staycation. We're being asked to buy Irish. We're being asked to support, support the local economy. You know, as the you know, as Irish people, we're we're trying to survive this crisis together. So why should football be any different? You know, why don't we ask people? Well, can you come to it? Can you can you get involved in your League of Ireland and um, your local League of Ireland club? Can you support them there? Um, so that that's it's just an awareness thing. Um, it's true. And so, I just so, think it's a, it's a conversation so- we're having. Sorry to cut across yeah. you. Sometimes that message can come across from League of Ireland fans as a, we don't want you supporting an English team. Why aren't you supporting an Irish team as a very kind of... That's what I got straight away when I said it. Yeah, and like, I don't I I understand help, why those things... Can't, but can't. Asian, you can't help how people interpret what you're trying to, what you're trying to say. See, that, that, is, to is, me, isn't the point, isn't the point that, 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 that fans can go ahead? It, like, the reason that people support the English Premier, Premier League is that it's on our doorstep, and uh, not as close as League of Ireland, but it's on our doorstep, and arguably um, the best league in the planet, right? The quality of football is unbelievable. The best and brightest Irish players will go and play there, and so people keep an eye on it for yeah. that reason. But I don't understand why that can't coexist. Why? Why one needs well, to coexist? The other? Of course, it can. It can. It can coexist. There's no. There's no. I'm not trying to. I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm genuinely not trying to spark an us against them conversation. Genu- really, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just. I just feel that that. Um, you know, there, there, there's so much money um, goes from here to the game over there. Um, you know, when you look at the cost of jerseys, the cost of travel, the cost of tickets, um, all this kind of thing. Um, what I'm trying to, uh, who I'm trying to appeal to is more so, Aidan, I'm trying to appeal to the person who's not really, you know, who, who maybe, you know, isn't really fully um, sure about why why it is they've, they, they've, they've supported the, um, a club in England. I, I've gone through this myself, Aidan. I went through this 20 years ago. Um, mm. And it was it, it coincided with maybe me signing for Shelbourne. Um, and I was, I was, uh, historically a Manchester United fan, you know, and I, I remember going to a Manchester United game when I was a kid, and it was it was amazing, the, the, the most amazing thing I've ever experienced in my in my in my in my life because I didn't know any any any, any different. Then got, going, I went back the odd time, subsequent years, um, a little bit older, a little bit wiser, and I just felt, you know. It was, you know, I don't know why I'm doing this. It's very expensive. Um, it's a lot. It, it's a, it's a long way to travel. The game wasn't that good. I think there's, you know, there, there was, um, there was all these kind of questions that I asked myself, and and it was, it coincided with me signing full time for Shelbourne. I really bought into what we were trying to do at Shells. We were trying mm-hmm. to sort of crack that European nut, and that was it. That's it. it it's just a, it, it, it's just a, an awareness I'm trying to put out there to people. That's it. I'm not genuinely. I mean. Genuinely not trying to segregate um, us, the, the League of Ireland, from the Premier League, or to, set, to put a, a, a big wall down the middle here. I really am, because mm. when you think about it, I mean, you know, there's there's this historically there's this conflict between uh, Ireland and England for all obvious sorts of political reasons. Um, but the one thing that's been um, um, a bond between the two has been football. That's the one thing that's uh, that, that that's been a huge bond between has kept probably conversations going between the two and has kept friendships, and that. So I I would never I would never attempt to try and remove that. It's just uh, I'm trying to kind of appeal to that that five percent of people that maybe would um, huge football lovers and uh, want to get involved in the game maybe and maybe there's a better option for them here. It's interesting yeah. that the people who have kind of got on board in recent times when it comes to League of Ireland clubs, there's just so many small things that do work for the league, even the idea of Friday night kickoffs and the social aspect that provides 
for a lot of people. I know that's been taken away now at this point, but is there an acceptance that perhaps that is a, a great avenue with which the League of Ireland can go down? The Friday night football, it doesn't clash generally with any Premier League games and for anybody in urban areas there is there tends to be a League of Ireland game on their doorstep on a Friday night and, and it's kind of like a great centrepiece of, of a social evening it, like that seems to be something that that is working even though it can be explored even further down the line hopefully when we get back to people in stadiums yeah yeah that, that like that has something I think that has has um it's it's helped put um a clearer identification on the league if 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 for want of a better phrase people knew that that League of Ireland games were on a Friday. And I think that helps. I think that helps people plan their week, plan their month, um, and they can plan around, you know, different things like that. So that's helped. That's something that that did come in a, a good few years ago. And I think primarily that was the reason. It was so that it was not conflicting with any other major sporting events going on around Europe. And I think it it, it certainly helped. Um, unfortunately, now we are starting to see games coming on a, on a Friday. But I think people do... Um, they look at Friday as being a League of Ireland thing, but it is only a start, I just say, and mm. I think it's something that we need to build on. I think you know, it's such a it's because because there's a huge infrastructural deficit within the football clubs. There's a lot of investment that needs to go in to kind of get us to a, to a certain level, even to kind of get us on a on a level, even maybe the GAA. You know, mm. so that's a that's a big problem and that's not going to fix itself overnight. That's going to come over time with investment um, and resources and things like that. But what we can do now, I think some football clubs have done a brilliant job at it. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm only looking at maybe the likes of Bohemians and my uh, my own club, Shells. Bows, I think, have, been, have done a, a great job at sort of tapping into their local community. They've sort of um, created an identity around the football club um, which has worked brilliantly, mm. you know, and because, and you only have to go to a game um, at Daily Mount when there's a crowd, obviously, <laughs> and and see how, you know, see the rewards that they're getting back for that. However, however, and this is the however, I don't think that can last forever. It has to evolve all the time because we're so, there is such a deficit. Um, there is such a deficit with, um, with, the, with, with, with stadia here, with resources, with facilities, that that's not going to last forever, and, and and we will have to evolve quickly. But I think we have the minds, and and the will, and the people to get involved. And just going back to what I was trying to suggest there, you know, with people maybe wanting to get involved with a club here, if you are, you know, if Bohemians is your local football club, you can nearly get involved immediately. You know, you, you know, they, we're crying out for people to help. You know, whereas maybe. That wouldn't be the case with some of the bigger football clubs in, in you know, in, in England. You, you know, you, you just there's there's no uh, there's no open avenue to get involved, so to speak. That's true. The kind of uh, like the, the Premier League is obviously in danger of consuming itself, and like we, we see pictures of Saudi Arabia pulling out of uh, Newcastle overnight and stuff. If the League of Ireland are going to create a point of difference, one of them is definitely more of a community-based thing. Uh, like I'm just keen on on this specific topic of actually promoting the game here. The All Ireland League then surely can't hurt. Like it is topical at the moment. We had the ten clubs in the League of Ireland Premier Division who'd written to the FAI last week to express engagement with a desire to engage with UEFA over this. There is big enough interest as well from the Irish League. Perhaps the IFA aren't fully on board. But do you see any drawbacks for the promotion of the League of Ireland were it to be transformed into some version of an All Ireland League? I don't see any drawbacks. No, I'm a huge advocate of the of an All Ireland League. I think I would think it'd be wonderful. Um, and just I've ha I had a taste of it as a player with the Santa Cup, especially in the first three or four years of the Santa Cup, because um, it was a big, big competition. People probably don't remember what the Santa Cup was like, but it was big. It was as big as the F it was bigger than the FAI Cup. Probably there was more prize money on, at stake, um, and you were playing against the, the, the biggest clubs from the south were playing, pitting themselves against the biggest clubs from 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 the north. So I got a real taste of it. I thought was I thought this was the way forward. This was the way forward, um, without a doubt. However, um, my eyes have been drawn, you know, especially in in, in recent years to the, the the political, you know, uh, sort of wall that's there at the moment, which is definitely improving. And that's I think that's going to be the one thing that will draw this process out. I, there's no doubt I feel that, that ultimately there will be an All Ireland League, um, and and hopefully it happens sooner rather than later. But um, 
putting a time frame on it own is very, very difficult to do. Very, very difficult to do. So what the only the, the by all means I think the clubs here and the clubs in the north putting in a submission to um UEFA is the correct way to do it. I think they need to open the lines of conversation, get the conversation going, um and and, 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 and try and path the way forward. But in the meantime, I do think clubs here need to get their own house in order before they even sort of start to think of an all Ireland league because if you know, if the clubs here aren't on a level playing field or are, aren't on a level footing, and the you know the infrastructure is not is not right, um, and they don't have their house in order, you know those issues and those problems are just going to carry themselves into an All Ireland League, and it'll just probably it'll probably be exacerbated by that if it goes into a bigger league, you know. So that's that's the only caution I would have there. Yeah, that they, if you join up, and, and the same goes for the Irish League as well. Anything that they might yeah. have, it, it just like. <laughs> The question is, though, how much time do you give yourself to sort out those issues before you actually get into this marriage? Like that, that is the question. Like if there, there probably won't be a time period in the near future where the League of Ireland will have sorted out all of its problems. Well, there, like it kind of seems that the All Ireland League is being seen as a solution to some of the problems, whereas perhaps that's not actually the case at all. Um, yeah, well, th that would worry me as well. That you know, th that 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 clubs here look at an All Ireland League as being a solution to their problems. Um it just it just won't work on. I mean and again it's very each club each club is um run very much differently, you know, and, and that became very evident in the negotiations during the COVID nineteen period to try and put a financial package together and to get the league back up and running. It was it was so fractured and the issues were so diverse across all the clubs that it was um, you know, it, it became a huge, uh, a huge pain point and a blocker towards moving forward. So, the the clubs um, really do have to kind of, um, I, I suppose, try and sort of get their own house in order here first. There's there's a, there's a big emphasis on this, there's a, and there's a big responsibility on football clubs to get their own, you know, to get their own um, infrastructure in place, their own finances in place their own what model works for them you know what financial model works for them going forward so you know are, can they can they be a, sem, as, um, uh, a semi-professional football club can they be a fully professional football club or can they mix both can they mix maybe um, um, you know uh, football with education or, or some, there, there, there's a lot of conversations and a lot of things that clubs need to kind of maybe um, get their head around before thinking they can go just go off to an all Ireland mm. league and and that will just solve all the problems because it won't. Uh, let's talk about the football tonight. You're covering Dundalk. I think it's very interesting how things have now changed. Where teams at the start of the calendar year were limbering up for a, a season that looked very very different to this. They've had an incredibly long layoff. We're going to see a number of new faces. I'd imagine come to the fore. This is what happens at the start of every season, not least the season that's had this long of a layoff. Do you, do you see form returning? Do you, do you see Rovers uh, and Dundalk going straight back to the top here, or are we going to see a, a bolter as the season develops? Yeah, well, funny to say that there, there's always there does always seem to be um, someone that comes out of the pack at the start of the season and really sort of rises above you know the expectation mm. level of everybody, and including themselves. But um, I don't know. I don't know whether I see that happening now because it's sh such a shortened season. Yeah. Um, and when you look at you know when you look at the table now you've got Rovers and Dock both in the driving seat um, and they're both in you know pole position to kind of kick on. Um, I'm very very much fascinated by the psychology of it all. Um, on and I kind of would have mentioned this to you. I just mm. as a player, um, you know, we are so tuned into an eight month season. Your body clock works a certain way at certain times during the season. You try to, you, you tend to change you, you, you tend to change your diet even as your as the season would go on as you get more fatigued you'd probably sort of make little altercations to your diet psychology wise um if you're um lucky enough to be playing in a in a in a club that's always run, going for league titles or always playing in Europe there's there's a there's a huge psychology around coping with those periods of the year where you're playing in Europe you're traveling away you're dealing with you're playing in temperatures of 30 degrees heat you're staying in hotels there's all that kind of stuff so all that now is just <laughs> it's just been you know, clamped into one very, very short and few weeks. Um, so, um, I don't. A lot of people won't know how their body is going to um, perform in, in in that period. Um, and you know, you'll get you, you're going to get the likes of injuries and suspensions and stuff like that. So, the only the only 
the only way the only way I look at this is that I look at the likes of Shamrock Rovers, Dundalk, um, they're very much uh, very professional outfits. They're um, um, you know they're sort of uh, tuned into sort of trying to win league titles, regardless of whether there's big crowds at games or not. There they they have to go out and. Um, perform week in week out, you know, and, and regardless of whether they're playing against the lesser teams or the bigger teams, they always have to perform because, you know, the lesser teams will always raise raise their game when they're playing against them. So they're at that sort of level, so I call it, um, mentally when when they perform. That's why I I, I think they I, I can't see past the two of them. I I, I can't see past uh, Shamrock Rovers or Dundalk. I think they're going to kick on. I don't know when you look at the 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 the, the, the packing behind. I think Bohemians have. Um, had a fantastic few years. Um, you know, I think they're 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 you know how they've acquired players. I think the job that Keith Long has done there has been has been incredible. Um, and I think they're, they're probably in best place to kind of maybe follow in suit. Um, but hopefully, um, hopefully what we see is, is you know very very good quality football because we're not going to be seeing games with crowds. We're going to be seeing um, the raw game, um, which. Uh, people aren't used to seeing. Um, they've gotten a little taste, of it, as I said before, by looking at some of the some of the games that have been have been shown on television. And so, hopefully, the quality is good on the pitch, which I hope, which I think it will be. I think it will be, especially with some of the top teams. It's interesting that you mentioned the the, the psychology of this sprint style season. It, it's as much to do with the physiology as anything else, isn't it? Is this going to just increase the gap between the professional and the semi-professional slash? non-professional teams uh, at this point? The, the greater resources means the greater ability to manage what is going to happen over the next little while. Yeah, yeah, really good points. Yeah, yeah, the, better, the, 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 the obviously the ability to recover is going to be, I think, key for, for, for a player. I'm thinking in a, in, a, in a player's sense here, the ability to recover and to, um, you know, to be able to kind of go from um, Saturday to, 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 to Tuesday to Friday to Monday, you know, so th th there's going to be shortened periods of time periods there to recover. Uh, some clubs are going to have to go and play in in in, in European football, um, and then of course there's there's also and then it, it, it it's a factor, but there's there, there's the the staggered times as well um, that these games are going to be played at. Um, a lot of footballers, a lot, a lot of players here don't have never played a game at two o'clock in their life, mm. <laughs> so it, it 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 that that plays into your preparation. You know that would that immediately that's what I'd be thinking of. I'm looking at the likes of shells. They're playing at two o'clock on Saturday. And then I think they're away on the on the Tuesday. So you know, at a two o'clock game, it's a yeah, um, it's a different different preparation for a player. So it's it's you know, you're up at a certain time. You're having a, you, you you may not have the the normal food intake you would if you were playing at seven forty five. Um, so it's just fascinating. It really is like you know, and it it it, it because it's such a it's. <laughs> you're so used to saying that uh, a league season is a marathon it's not, it's not a sprint you know mm. and then all of a sudden you just have to turn <laughs> on the head and say no no it's a sprint <laughs> mm -hmm. so uh, uh, I, I think I think we're going to see within the first couple of weeks we're going we're gonna to see a, a definitive uh, shape on the table and then of course um, those that are down the bottom it's a, it's a real scrap for survival it's not going to sit well with them you'd imagine the teams that do get relegated that was the, the big sticking oh, point yeah. regarding the negotiations yeah, I, 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 um, I don't really want to think of that at the mm. moment because I, 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 it's very hard to see um, anybody getting relegated being being happy with it, and you know, I, I, I suppose it does open to it, it's, it's probably open to an appeal because they changed the rules mid-season. But um, unfortunately, I think that's one of them things that we're just going, those that's one of them bridges we're just going to have to cross when we come to it because we just have to get the game back up and running here. We have to get people back looking at football. We have to get players back playing football, and we um, we use that that time between now and the end of the season to try and um, put some sort of a, a, a shape or a roadmap on where we want the kind of league to go, even for even for next season. So, what's going to decide the title race then, Stewie? Before we leave you go, and uh, what is your prediction? Well, I would imagine I'd imagine the likes of Dundalk and Rovers are looking at that game, that single game that they have um, left to play each other. Twenty fifth uh, of September. Twenty fifth of September. Yeah, yeah. So obviously live on TV, um, all the all the stuff going behind it. So it's um, even though there's the, even though it's 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 not right at the end of the season. There's probably a, a, a five or six week period at to kind of uh, recover from any kind of uh, loss of points. But I'd say that's the real. You know, I can I can only see Shamrock Rovers and Dundalk, um, you know, uh, leading the charge here, staying very very close together until that game. I think that game might be the might be the real decider. You know, so.
Can't see beyond the two of them. Well, enjoy tonight, Stewie. It's good to be back. Thanks, many for taking the call.